So before we start taking apart other people's wallets, I thought we'd do a little video on how I make my most popular wallet, just so you can have like a nice base of information to go off of moving forward when we start ripping all these different wallets apart. So this is our Claude wallet. This is named after my grandpa, Claude Maurice. He's the one that taught me leatherworking. So before we did our, our camera harness Kickstarter that raised a quarter of a million, this was our first um, Kickstarter where we raised $12,000 while I was still in college. And we've sold thousands and thousands of them since then and it's been our most popular wallet. So all the leather we use in the wallets all comes from Horween. They're the oldest tannery in America and they're world famous for all their different kinds of leather. This lighter tan color is their Dublin and it is the prettiest leather. I, I love it so much and it's got tons of character and it got, it, it's got tons of like flaws and stuff in it that makes it look really pretty. Um, it's a really natural looking leather and the thickness we use is a two to three ounce leather which equals about one and a half millimeters. It's a full grain leather. I made a video this week about like leather 101 and kind of going through what's top grain, what's what's uh, genuine leather and kind of what's the difference in the different types and qualities of leather so you can kind of understand what leather quality means and what the different grades are. The thread that we use is Ritza thread. It's a braided and wax polyester um, thread from Germany and we use 0.8 millimeter thread. I love this thread. It's, it's kind of a famous thread in the leatherworking community. A lot of people refer, refer to it, <laughs> refer to it as a uh, tiger thread. So you might've heard of this. It's awesome stuff. The overall design of this wallet, um, it looks really simple, but it actually took a lot of designing to make it work right. A lot of people would design this as three pieces, a back piece, middle piece, and front piece. But I wanted a wallet that had a front pocket that was a quick draw pocket that holds your like credit card, whatever your most used card is snug. And then you can fit all those other cards you never use in the back pocket um, without compromising that front pocket and stretching it out. So we use two pieces because with that back pocket, having that rolled edge instead of a stitched edge, it gives you a little bit more room to stuff more cards without stretching out that front pocket. And it's been super successful and it makes it way easier to use rather than making out of three pieces. So now let's get to the actual making of the wallet. Um, so the first thing we're gonna do is grab our Dublin hide and then take it over to our clicker press and start cutting it out. The way a clicker press works is you, you have dies and these dies are basically steel knives in the shape of whatever you're cutting out. You put this die on top of the leather, swing the head over and, and the press pushes down with 25 tons of force, forcing the die down and cutting out the leather perfectly in the shape. There's a few other ways uh, wallet companies do uh, their cutting of the wallets. A lot of people use a hydraulic clicker press like us. Other people use a laser cutter and the majority of bigger companies, they use like a giant CNC knife machine where they can just put an entire hide down on a vacuum um, sealed bed. So for a smaller company like us, we use a clicker press because it's a lot cheaper and a lot more efficient when it comes to um, small batch stuff. Then we take it to the heat press for the logo. Now that our pieces are cut out from the clicker press, we need to stitch them together. And there's two main ways of um, stitching wallets. The majority of people sew their wallet on a sewing machine. Um, and the other technique is hand sewing. It's more the traditional way of doing it. It's a lot stronger and it allows you to use thicker thread. And that's how we do our wallets. It's not as realistic for giant companies because hand stitching hundreds of thousands of wallets is kind of a big ask for any company. We usually just stitch it by hand, but to show you kind of the technique, we're gonna put it in one of these stitching ponies. And basically what you do is you, you clamp your, your work into this and it allows you to use those two needles and thread to stitch the wallet together. It makes it really fast and easy. Um, it's obviously a lot slower than a sewing machine, but it's a lot stronger and it allows you to use a lot thicker thread. But we hand stitch all of our wallets because it's, it's, a, it's a superior way of constructing a wallet. The threads aren't dependent on each other for strength. There's two, you basically use two needles to weave the, the thread instead of stitching it. So if you're interested in that, I also, have, I also have a video on how to hand stitch. It kind of goes through the basics of it and the technique behind it. So I'll link that in the description. And now that the wallet's all stitched together, it's time for the burnishing. And burnishing is basically just finishing the edges of the wallet. This is also kind of like an old school technique. There's a lot of different ways to do it. There's hand burnishing, there's machines that do it. And I, I have a video on how to do this as well. So if you're interested in burnishing leather, I'll put that video in the description as well. But basically we put on a slicking compound, whether it's tokenol or gum tragacanth. Those aren't words that I made up, they're actual things. Basically what you're doing when you're burnishing is taking a compound 
but it's gonna put a nice finish on the leather so it's got a nice shine to it. It lays all those fibers nice and flat so you have a really nice finished looking edge. And then once that's all done, we're pretty much done with the wallet and we just need to package it out, package it up and ship it out and that's, that's how we make our most popular wallet. Anyway, so it's time to take apart this Bellroy wallet and kind of check out the leather quality, how it's built, and just general general review of this wallet. So, see ya. Oh, and I forgot to tell you that we're gonna give away 10 of these wallets to 10 people that like, comment, and subscribe. So at the end of the week, we'll basically choose 10 comments and comment on them to select the winners. So comment, like, and subscribe, and you can win a wallet.